Yes, we're back on 67 Hail Hail on YouTube. If you've not yet subscribed, please do that. We're also on Twitter, uh, at 67 Hail Hail, and the same on Facebook. I've got John Reid and David Walton with me, Hamish Carton, and we're going to chat about Lee Griffiths because, you know, five goals in nine games at the start of 2020. The resurgence is real. LG number nine is back. <laughs> He is, and I'm surprised, I have to say, that he's been so resurgent in the second half of the season, especially when you consider that he rarely played at all in the first half of the season. Obviously, there was like injury reasons, etc. But he got that big chance against Rangers. He came on to try and save the game. I've and got this all written oh, down. Oh, well, tough. The free kick. Aye, and let's face it, it was poor. And see, when he put that free kick out of the bar and the reaction after it, uh, I it thought, was, was that's his Celtic career finished. I felt the exact I think, <laughs> I think it'll go on loan or something until it like Hibs or something in January and then leave you at the end of the season. And it wasn't just you thinking that. That was genuine. I, I know the I'd, chat at the start of January mm, was, well, Lee Griffiths got it Oh, I definitely. Hibs. I thought was, after that free kick, I know it was only one instant, but it was a good chance to get us like, a point because we thought there was going to be a title race then. But I thought, he's done that before for us. Had free kicks in good positions, blazed them up, but... That, the reaction was so uh, bad, yeah, I thought, I that's it, it's finished. But then, somehow in the January, obviously in Dubai, they decided, let's try and play him and Eddie together in a front two. And since then, it's been brilliant. Is, no looked back. Is a defeat to Rangers the best thing that could ever happen to Lee Griffiths? Oh, that's a good question, actually. Um, possibly so. I, I, I don't think it... I don't think maybe it was necessarily a defeat to Rangers, though. I mean, I thought there was... I thought it needed some freshness regardless um, heading into that game. He had that free kick. No, John saying he thinks that was the end for him. <laughs> I thought it was Clamalla signing. I thought that was the moment that Griffiths was going to end up having to leave. And obviously, he had some of the twist stuff after it. Um, yeah. But, yeah. you know, the turnaround has been incredible. And he is contributing as well. It's mm -hmm. not as if he's just getting game time. He's making a good impact. His link-up play with Edward... Regardless of what you think, Edward, and everyone knows Edward as the better footballer and the better player, Griffiths is doing his part. He's really, really helping Edward as well. I mean, you consider um, that there's only been a partnership for like around a month. Yeah. It's it brilliant moment, how well they're For me, they started the game at Thistle, and then a few days later they started at Kelly. And there was a moment for me in the second half where... I think one of the two, I think maybe Edward ran over the ball and Griffiths then, and then ran on and Griffiths played it to him. And that was the moment for me they clicked. And since then, they've been frightening. I mean, I've folk talk about, they? you know, uh, McDonald and Hesselink and Stokes and Hooper, but these two are unbelievable. Well, I together. think people underestimate Griffiths' football intelligence. He's a brilliant you know? footballer. I mean, he's mm -hmm. got a brilliant, brilliant brain football. for it as well. I, um, you know, he, he's shown his sharpness. You know, good goal, well taken. Uh, well, I know he completely missed it at the weekend there, but... <laughs> He had another one that was well taken. that got chopped off. Um, I'm not talking really about well that. It was a good finish. Yeah. Uh, he is one of these players. Now, the, the big question you ask with Griffiths is, when the high-profile games come, does he still stay in the team? The teams that actually have attacking threat to them, we'll real attacking mm, Probably find out on Thursday. I right? actually think he will. Exactly. I think he will when we go Ibrox. I think I'd love so to see it, John. I'd so love there. to see He's that. done well at Ibrox before see for us. I thought of those two donkeys at the back dealing with Edwards <laughs> and Griffiths. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't actually think he'll start against uh, Copenhagen in the second Like, nothing against him, just the way we're set so up in Europe. Why? That, that, that's my point, though. Like, why would you? Sort because that's just the way we play. But because that's the way we play in I Europe, and that's what's got success. That's got success. Copenhagen at home is a tougher game than going to Not Ibrox. saying that. I no, but it's different. a different situation. European See, football is much more possession based for me. Uh, Derby and games. we're not starting the derby. We're not starting the Copenhagen game. We are clean, clean slate and not on each. See the the uh, the spanner I would throw into that works as a derby. We don't necessarily need to win it. That's the only thing. And I agree with but you. I but I think we we'll want to go and win it and yeah. prove a point after I December. I think you go and have a go at Copenhagen. Don't go three five yeah. two. Yeah, that's my point. It's probably a debate for another day. Um, in terms of Griffiths, who deserves credit for you for other than him for for this revival? Um, Neil Lennon, yep. <laughs> you know, obviously, he showed faith in him, put him right in from the start, mm -hmm. and when he started against Partick, I think a lot of people thought, well, it's a cup game against Partick, you know, it's a good chance for him, he started turning into premier, Premiership action, and he started looking good in some big games there, um, you've also got Edward, of course, he's, he's helped Griffiths yeah. so much, um, if it was Lee Griffiths as a lone striker, would the picture be different, you know, would people be looking at Griffiths alone striker is, is, is the same. Effect. He has put his alone striker so once and he didn't score. It exactly. was the Ross County game. He had to bring Edward on. He had to brought Edward on. So um, I think that shows that for now he's much better than a two. Griffiths gets the best out of him. Outside of that, you know, I'm, 
he's never really had a partner prior to Edward, has no, he? No, no really. In his whole time we've in no, the club? We've not really played two strikers. It's only really been like a sort of desperation situation even for being like, a late equaliser like even, against Rangers. Uh, even when you think back to like his Beersheva free kicks and that, he was the number one then. Mm-hmm. Belly was on mm-hmm. the bench and Ronnie Dyla days, he never had another striker. No, it was him. So it was mostly like somebody like Commons. Uh, it's maybe just a sign that his game's changed, and but there's no doubt in like see just watching them two and doing the, run, the dummies and the runovers and. Who would you say it's, it's, the, it's the best strike partnership since? <sighs> would you say Larson and Sutton, or is that going too far? Well, I mentioned the two other partnerships that are the obvious ones. McDonald and Big Yang. I think it probably is the best since last and somebody you've got Hartson in there as well, like with, with Hartson and Mc, uh, McDonald, Sutton or whatever. McDonald and Hesselink was a good partnership, but no one near the footballers for no. me. I don't think McDonald's anywhere near as good as Griffiths. Yeah. And very good at Hesselink. Um isn't as poor, good as Poor Yang, as, he did a job. Obviously. He did aye. But I mean Scored McDonald, goal honestly goal here. Her, her, we are Molly coddling them. <laughs> good. <laughs> we're, we're, Big we're, Yang, all, we're all grown up here. I mean, he has got a long name. <laughs> right. I don't like Big Yan, I don't get what you're on about. Right. Uh, Lee Griffiths, can he improve further and how much further can he improve? I, I, I don't know because this is the best he's I think, ever played for us. Even if you consider like, when he scored, was it like 40 goals in one of no, Ronnie's season? I think this is the best he's ever played for us. But I feel like there's still more to come for him than this current level. I don't, I don't know, know because you sort of, I sort of worry that... He's only scored one in every game and he's not he's not scored more than one in a game. No. I feel like I still think that's that. something he, he can... And I'm not saying that like, scoring one every game is brilliant, but I think he's I know, got two he's, goals if, in him, he's got hat-tricks in him. I think he's injured again or something, might not come back the player he was. Nah, I, f- I feel like his mentality is where it needs to be now. I feel like he's got... No one's doubting Lee Griffiths no, anymore, true, are they? No, true enough. I mean, like, we go back literally six weeks ago and folk are saying, as we said, mm-hmm. go to Hibs, is he going to loan? Is he going to leave the club? Lennon's getting asked about it in press conferences. Griffiths is getting asked about it after the Thistle game. You that's know, right, he's going yeah, to stay yeah. at the club when Clamalla came in. But I think now no one's doubting him no, at all. Prove the doubt so. wrong. Anything else to add, guys? Well, I mean, I don't agree. I, I don't know how much he's got to improve. Um... He, Interestingly, I don't know if well, he'll he probably be back in the Scotland team as well for that. Oh, he'll he'll be back in that Scotland team. Has to be. So, and I, I know, I think that's a big deal for him to be in the Scotland team again. So yeah, quite that'll be isn't like maybe driving him on to play even better for us. Aye, I, I don't know how sort of you know in terms of his overall game, how much improvement you'll get out of him. But you know, for, for getting the levels that we're getting just now, then it's, it's brilliant for us. And I think it's all dependent on the, the continued faith in Neil Lennon and yeah. whether he does mm-hmm. continue to pick him for bigger games like Copenhagen. Well, he scored five <laughs> five goals and nine starts at the start of this year. He's probably got, say, another 10 starts in him before the mm-hmm. end of the season. If he can score another, you know, five or six goals, end up in 11 goals for the season, he, he that's just, not bad. He just, I think he'll get more he, than that. Just oh, sorry, he scored at pre-season, so right. he'd end up in maybe 13 or 14. J- just totally hates not scoring. Uh, yeah. right. Just really... You can actually see him... He looks angry when he's not scoring, and the minute he scores, everything's kind of all right in the world. His corners have improved so, as well, by the way. Yeah, and that's a big weapon for mm-hmm. us as well. Not to the detriment of the team either, when we're talking about him not being happy when he's not scoring, because when if there is a goal celebration to be had, he's right in the thick of it, regardless of whether yeah. he's scored or not. Yep. So, But he is a player that just thrives on goals. I'm just delighted to see him back. He's a terrific footballer, Griff. Yep, I think that sums it up. Yep. Thanks, John. Thanks, David. If you've not yet followed us, Twitter, Facebook, 67 Hail Hail, YouTube as well. We're back tomorrow. We're chatting about the quadruple treble, whether we mm-hmm. think it's feasible, whether we think it's more likely than not even. And um, We'll do all that tomorrow. Then on Friday, we're going to chat about the Scottish Cup memories as well. Stay tuned for that.